episode four. We're back in the studio again. I'm joined by Keen. Uh, as again, you all know who Keen is at this stage, but we have Connor with us today, an avid movie fan. Do you want to say hello, Con? Hello, yeah. It's good to be featured on the Film Junkies podcast. Yeah, happy to be here. Happy to be here, yes. He's but another Dave, essentially. So, yeah, again, another twin. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> we, for the first topic anyway, uh, for this episode, would be focusing on films that were had good directors but unfortunately turned out to be quite bad uh, I think Keen has a pretty good list ahead of him uh, Connor has good ideas in his head as well I do too but uh, I'll go to you first Keen. I think you were writing extremely avidly there before yeah, we started absolutely. So. it's a very interesting topic because um, yeah directors are human too and it's impossible for someone to be on their game the entire time you know day in day out so when you're a good director and you have a big long career ahead of you mm. uh, and behind you there's a very good chance that at some stage in your career, you made a film that didn't quite make it. And um, yeah, that happens especially to film, to directors that have like a very, very prolific career. So they made a lot of movies and some of them just didn't hit the mark. Yeah. Um, so one that I always like to, that I, that I always think of for myself, um, director that I love is Francis Ford Coppola. Okay. And he's pretty much acknowledged, I think, uh, as one of the greatest Filmmakers of all time, pretty much by everyone. But he's had some stinkers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, like, you know. See, I, I wouldn't personally know too much, yeah. but I think that's why you're about. I mean, even if you don't know Francis Ford Coppola, you definitely know the films that he's made. You yeah, know, yeah. You know, okay. Apocalypse Now, mm-hmm. um, The Godfather trilogy, mm-hmm. uh, Godfather Part Two. He won uh, Best Director, um, and one one of my favorite films is The Conversation, okay. uh, which won the Palme d'Or. Uh, if, if you're looking for a film to watch, I'd recommend that for sure. But then some of the films that. Um, weren't quite as good that people perhaps um, pushed back to the back of their memory right. try to try to suppress the memory of these awful films um, one of them is a film called The Outsiders um, so The Outsiders okay. was a film in 1983 and it's based on a, based on a novel and the novel is about teen gangs in a rural town in America um, and the film is truly so awful that it's it's actually good. I'd actually recommend it because okay. it's so cringy to watch that yeah. there's there's humor there. You can't look away because it's so bad kind of thing? Absolutely. I think if I'd struggle to see I'd struggle to watch something that was so bad. The I, Room is the one thing I can watch because it's so bad that I love it. That's true. Mm-hmm. But room, I don't think it's the same. I'm sure it's not the same part. It's not. But here here's the here's the, here's the uh, the cracker of it yeah. is it has a brilliant cast. So the cast, it's it's so crazy. They have all these big names from, this, from the 80s. Um, so there's Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, the brother of Charlie Sheen. There's oh, wow. Matt Dillon, there's Tom Cruise, a very, very young Tom Cruise, and then mm. Patrick Swayze and Ralph Macchio. That was one of his first films, Tom Cruise, though. So. Um, it yeah. would have been, I'd say, yeah. But yeah, definitely the start of his career, for sure. But there's also Ralph Macchio, the karate kid. Yeah. So you have all these different icons from the 80s, all playing members of teen gangs in a very small, very, uh, small town. But you could say that, that you could say now that those cast, that the cast of that film, you'd think, oh, would they, would they carry that film? But back then, they wouldn't have been... I think they wouldn't have had enough uh, kind of experience or yeah. be well-known actors to carry They wouldn't have been so huge then, it was just the They definitely itself. moved on. They definitely moved on for sure. And yeah. at the time, it was actually quite um, successful. Like for in the 80s, really? cringy was was uh, good. <laughs> but um, at the time, it, it did it did make a profit. And uh, obviously, it was, those, everyone in that film went on to have a hugely successful career, including yeah. Francis Ford Coppola. So uh, they definitely didn't hold them back. But I would recommend it because... Um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of iconic, um, really, really lame uh, writing. Yeah. And it's just so cringy that it's just, just well, you like, can't look away. This one as well that I picked was like, uh, Matt Damon is staring in it hereafter. And Clint Eastwood like, is one of my favorite. I think Gran Torino is definitely up there, one of my favorite films. Mm. But as a director, this film was just, I don't know what it was. I think the, he t- he casted like a set of twins that had been an episode of, um, I can't remember the name of the... Like a TV show. Yeah, they were in an episode, but they only one episode before. That was all, their only acting experience, I'm sure. Yeah. And they haven't acted since they acted in that film. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, it was oh, just Lord. a whole bunch of kind of... The, so, it was so, more the script rather than the actual directing, I think. But what mm. do you think was was, was Eastwood um, mistaken in, in his appraisal of, of yeah. the acting in that one episode? I think so. But too, I, too high expectations? Yeah, and Matt Damon was pretty good in it, to be fair. Um, I mean, he is, he is a great actor. But this, um, I, say, I say this was ages ago. This was 2010. 
Uh, and he even and then he still had a good bit of but, kind of fame about him. But Eastwood, uh, Clint Eastwood, has made so many films that it's like really yeah, it's it's statistically impossible for him to not to make. Yeah, bad I think films. he just he makes he makes one banger of a film that he acts in, and then he goes on to make, direct ten more with the budget that he has from just his salary. It's mm-hmm. like he makes one film and then he, he does like, what he wants. Literally, he goes from one set to the very next set. He makes like three oh, films yeah. a year. Basically. There's no there's no Acting, particular directing, genre I think he so, enjoys. Yeah. I think what he was his always. last film? The last one, uh, he made one after American Sniper, I think. He made a very small one. I, I did you did the mule the one with Brad Pitt? Was... Oh, he did the mule, yeah. but I think he did one even after the mule. Um, it was about a, a security guard who was falsely accused of uh, being involved in, in some sort of terrorist attack. Oh, uh, I, uh, I, was that with Jake? Richard, Richard Jewell. Jewell. Is that the one with... That came out recently, actually. I yeah. saw a poster for that in the train station in Dublin yeah, uh, we back in like February. Yeah. It apparently didn't do as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's supposed to be okay. What's the actress? Well, she's from Titanic. She's in that too. Who, Kate Winslet? No. Kathy Bates, yeah. I heard about that right, but apparently it wasn't great. I mean, definitely want to check out because, um, you know... The American average... Sniper one, is that the, the Brad Pitt one? Y- no, no the, it's Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Cooper yeah. Yes, I, I didn't watch it, just the whole, yeah. Sometimes the vibe, Clint Eastwood, the vibe, I don't... It's I so don't... weird, he jumped from the genre to genre. He's not fearless, isn't it? or he's, he is fearless. Hmm. in kind of exploring new things which is great but it's true he, he does look at things from a, from a different direction but at the same time if you remember the Obama chair thing yeah I have this vi- I have this vivid image of just him like strolling out literally strolling out to any film set and just doing what he wants like Absolutely. he would rock up and be like I'm directing this and every single other person in the cast crew would be like okay I heard he goes from take to take so like one performance he's like Grant good job and then moves on to literally he maybe not even saying good job. He just moves on to the next angle. Yeah. Maybe like after one take. I kind of like that. I can respect that though. And he's directed around forty films, is he? Absolutely. So, like, do you think though it's a, do you think it's an arrogant thing where like he's he thinks he's done enough to do that, or do you think he actually just kind of isn't actually like that? The arrogant in in terms of he has experience and he knows what he's he, made he out knows of what the forty he wants. odd films mm-hmm. he's made. How many do you think he's actually made that are decent? Loads. What's your favorite, Connor? Uh there's this one that he did. I I forget what it's called now, but it's got uh. Kevin Bacon and okay. Oh, the the, the Western one, Mystic River. Yeah, that's a really good film. That, that was good. Yeah, Dave uh, spitting facts in the back room there. He knows, yeah, knows everything. But you the chair. <laughs> I, I love um uh, personally uh, Letters from Iwo Jima. That, that's, oh, one, that's one of my favorite. My dad said that. Uh, my dad um said that to me a few weeks ago. Yeah, th- he made a he made two films about the Battle of Iwo Jima in World War Two, uh, America versus Japan. And he made two films, one from the Japanese point of view and one from the American point of view. So the same, very same events, yeah. uh, like a three-week battle. Um, oh, oh, actually, there was this one film he made about jazz musicians that wasn't very good, I remember. Oh, yeah? It came out in, uh, what was it? It was a few years ago now, anyway, I think. Fair. And mm. it was very bad. Yeah, my dad watched uh, like me. I was. I watched it with my dad. Yeah, yeah like, my dad he, is huge in the jazz. Dad film <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's this thing like my dad's always said. He would turn around and say, "Gran Torino is his favorite film as well." And because of that, he said he'd sit down and watch a bunch of Clint Eastwood directed films. And he watched like three of them. I don't know what ones he watched, but he's like, he wouldn't have much of knowledge to do. He's like, directors are just like, they're not the same as actors. And I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But um, yeah, no, that he's born. Listen to this, hi Dave. Um, hi Dave, Dad, big up Dad. Dave um, Senior. So that's one director. Is there anyone that you think Steven Spielberg? I think me and Keen. Indiana Jones. The the last Which, one. Yes, the last one. Yeah. Not any of the ones before. No. Well, the first three are are really great films. I think they're one of they're some of my all time favorite films. I think like the Last Crusade, especially that really yeah. I think that really like closed like the the trilogy. Really, like yeah. you have you know obviously you have the title the Last Crusade and like the story that went on in it. You know he's yeah. Indiana's like building. Or developing his relationship with his dad, yeah. and at the end they just go off in the, into the sunset. And then yeah. you have Kingdom of the Crystal Skull comes out, and it just Harrison Ford and just looks like yeah, he, he's very just much not interested in in, yeah. in, in 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 being proud of the film at all. He wasn't interested. I don't think he wants to even be an actor more. He, even Star Wars, he was just waiting to be killed off. Han Solo, he was just like, if oh, they, no, he was, I'd say he if they was, asked him to do another one, they'd be like, he'd be like, no way. I mean, look, I think it's fair enough after yeah. his entire. I think career. of his age and he to do exactly action yeah. movies like that is pretty pretty impressive like yeah because i mean nobody wants to see you know an old indiana jones especially no <laughs> and he was but that's why they built up to be um uh shia labeouf to be the new well that, you see a lot of people so a lot of had. people didn't like shia labeouf in the film but i i actually thought I, he was one of the best parts of the film yeah. it wasn't him that was the problem it i like the, the whole... relationship between him and his uh, and the mom yeah ex- and the mom and the mom yeah. no i, I, I that, that, that was funny. an issue i had i didn't like really? i didn't really like them bringing her back actually was she in she Before. was she was in the first yeah. film, yeah. She was his love interest in the first film, Marion. Yeah. Oh shit! I, I thought you meant his mom was. His <laughs> no, no. no. 
That's why I can't get out of it's that Star Wars. Point. No, that's George Lucas, isn't it? Yeah. But um, but so you think that uh, the the Kingdom of Crystal Skull is not a good bad film. one. Like like the, the, just the whole narrative, like the it story. Very, it was very. It was very much. Okay. It's just very puzzling, like the story that they chose to go with. Like they chose to yeah. follow. Um, they 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 put in a bit of like science fiction into the film. Um, yeah. It just didn't really work yeah. for me. If, in, like if you look at back at the previous Indiana Jones films, I'm trying to think of it. It's been a while since I seen it. It's and, it's pure the kind of film you'd see on TV at Christmas. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know the the action was really not very good, with the exception of like one or two scenes. Yeah, like there's a really cool car chase in the film. That, I think it's like about halfway through. Is the that film. in the jungle? No, 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 no. Oh no, it's when they're on it's, the bike. It's when they're on the yeah, bike. Yeah, that's pretty good. They really go to good. the library. Yeah, because because yeah. that you can see they actually filmed that like on location. Yeah, they filmed that in a in, but then, in America. But sure. then the action scene in the last act where they're they're going through the jungle and those like big trucks or or cars on the like the cliffside. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's that's awful. And he's like, he's like, sw- he's like swinging, swinging through trees with, with monkeys and stuff and everything. It's the most stupid thing. And and he's like, you know, he's doing sword fighting with like one of the main villains. Yeah. It's just it's sounds, just really stupid and over the top, I think. It sounds a bit like Spielberg, we're just taking a day off. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I think he just let George Lucas direct so That's this one you definitely have a grudge over, I said. Yeah. Uh, and I another Spielberg film was 1941. It's a film that a lot of people probably don't know of. Uh, yeah, what's that about now? Um, Teach us. It was actually his third, like, you know, big film that he made. Well, it wasn't really a big film, but he made it after Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And... Especially how good Jaws was, yeah. and I thought Close Encounters was a bit of a. I mean, okay yeah, movie. I, know, I know you might have it's thoughts. Like yeah, he's, 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 he, Connor about. doesn't know any of these. He's just looking at Keen's notepad and taking <laughs> but, films um, off it. But but 1941 was just a really bad comedy film, really set in World War Two. It's basically about um, 1941. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's. It's it, it was just a very bad. It just had a lot of bad slapstick humor in it, and so he came off Jaws to do that. Yeah, it was it was made it was made a few years after Jaws and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Mm. Um, it's it's set in World War Two. It's you know it's. I know. I, I, so I like some some World War Two uh, World War Two movies. I really love, but then because the ones I love are nothing like the ones that uh, um are nothing like the ones I love. The rest yeah. of them, I just find it hard to enjoy them. I don't uh, know. And another They're film, another film he did that's pretty bad is uh, the Terminal with Tom Hanks. Yeah, I mean, oh. I thought that was a fairly passable film. Like, it's very, um, I think it's, it's different from his other stuff, so maybe that's why, it, like, you hold it to different expectations. You swear Spielberg didn't direct it. It's just I a mean, pretty yeah. bad romantic comedy film, I think. <laughs> really. The thing about Spielberg is, is he's good at all, at doing things. He's good at, at the genre films. So he chose a genre, which is like, just like a Tom Hanks comedy, and he just made it, yeah. and it was successful. It's awful. Like, like but it's just different players. from his other stuff. Like, yeah. I think he just tried. He's tried to do something a bit different. I think from the previous films, and it just didn't. It realized like that's not his niche. Really. That's good though for a director to try something. Do you I not suppose. think it's a good thing for a director to try something different? I mean, yeah. I mean, Spielberg. I think he's just a very clever person. Like a very like clever. You were saying that Scorsese's films, filmmaker. um, they very rarely miss. A lot of them are always hits. Yeah, yeah. but they're never just... the same genre, really. The, maybe on the f- surface, but like you can't time, say. Well, I'm just going to say compare two, but Shutter Island and Wolf of Wall Street. Let's say. Mm. I was, was going to say they're kind of similar. Do you think? <clears throat> just <clears throat> the. Just because I seem he seems to cast DiCaprio in every film he makes. Well, that's like most that's films. Two. But the Irishman again then was Scorsese, and that's quite. I wouldn't say it's but quite different to Shutter Island, but I'm um, just picking your three. Yeah, I mean his his big genre was was just um, gangster films, but I think the main yeah. crux of what what he always goes for is um, relationships. And, you know, like, kind of something dark happening. And, like, he also uh, made the one set in Japan. Well, that was... Um, what was that called again? Oh, what was it called? Okay. This is why I have this? Yeah. It um, was... Uh... Jeez. But, yeah, anyways, anyway, uh, for yeah. the most part, uh, Scorsese is, is is pretty much bang on. And he doesn't, like, I think... Cause it's he, called Silence, I think? Si- yeah. There we go. From 2016. Yeah, that's it. I saw that in cinema. Yeah. Yeah. So that Andrew Garfield. He, yeah. What the hell? Yeah, sorry, sorry, what were you saying, kid? I was gonna say he doesn't compromise. Uh, like he's he just um, he instead of there too. instead of doing stuff for the for the box office, uh, he just makes films for himself, basically. Did you ever see Casino? Casino, no, I haven't. Yeah. Well, he 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 made that a few years after Goodfellas. Oh, and yeah? if you watch the two films now, they 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 it's, they're very similar beat by beat. I think. Mm. Um, same cast as well. In fact, they both have Robert De Niro and uh, Joe Pesci in it, and My favorite. they pretty much played the exact same characters. Like yeah. you'd swear it was like 
Yeah, I, I don't think, think it's your best game. I think both of those are, I think, of Home Alone. Yeah, but, I, mean, I think Casino, of My Cousin Vinny. No, Casino oh, cousin is Vinny. just like a very watered down version of Goodfellas, I think. It's yeah. just, it just wasn't very um, good, I don't think. Well, so, if you've any more directors, you can get more directors. Um, look, I'm sure there's plenty, but Close like, encounters. We could sit like, that's that. the thing with these podcasts, we could sit here for hours if we, we, we want really to, could. we're just deciding to bulk it up, or uh, yeah. chop it up as much as can. Alien 3 by David Fincher, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, that, that's not, that's not a good film either, really. Um, it was one of David Finch's first that's films, though, I think. Um, so he's only staring. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it was made as, like... A sequel to Alien Aliens, of course. I never they're, been two, a, they're two great films. Are they so. the Alien versus Predator films? Or is they came after. And they're awful, yeah. Yeah, I find them difficult. Yeah. To find I know a person who's obsessed with them. Uh, he watches, like, apparently there's a very strict chronological order you apparently are supposed to watch them in. That's very strict. Uh, very, like, if you don't... If you mess up in one of them, right. or if you watch one before the other, it can mess up everything. It's yeah. like an X Men film, yeah, or any of the X Men yeah, films. Yeah. But um, yeah, we could sit here all day and talk about because, yeah. But the next thing we want to talk about was the digital age. Mm-hmm. They're just transferring mainly yeah. to digital age. Uh, obviously, over lockdown, a lot of people downloaded stuff like Amazon, um, Apple TV, Disney Plus came, came out. Uh, but I think we've started to see in the last few years that a lot of these films that were coming out on Amazon, Netflix are getting not Oscar nominated. Yeah, so, absolutely. So like you've got. A Marriage Story, The Irishman from Netflix. Then you've got uh, Green Book and stuff from Amazon. You've got a lot of different ones Oscar nominated. Not winning, some of them winning, but a lot of them being nominated. And do you think it's something that directors are starting to see a lot more now? That it's an opportunity? Uh, yeah, I think the opportunity. Of the big bop, a box office cinema film, to think that that's I mean, I mean it's coming It's coming to be the case um, that, it, that it will be the future of the big box office. This is where the big bucks are going to come from, yeah. is it, these big streaming Especially platforms. Especially now the next few years with what's going on, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Big at, home gel, at home movies are... It's new normal that we're facing, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, it, it is the future of cinema and um, the you know brick and mortar cinema may be just like, maybe just be one aspect, be an experience aspect of mm-hmm. the film industry as a whole. Um, and... Like obviously, a lot of people wanted to fight back against that, and so if like Netflix, these streaming platforms, they haven't been around that long. Um, Ten years ago, you know, you wouldn't even dream of a film that wasn't um, made by an actual studio to be nominated for anything, yeah. let alone uh, yeah. an Academy Award. Mm-hmm. But um, I remember Manchester by the Sea that was That's bought Amazon. by Amazon. Yeah. yeah, so it wasn't made by Amazon; it was bought by Amazon. That after got it was nominated made. for a few. It did, but Manchester- people may, I don't, maybe I it just streams on Amazon. But yeah. it's out down here for Amazon Films Inceptions there. Uh, yeah. John Wick. The first John Wick. I think these are Amazon funded though. Yeah. Th- Inception was one. Really? Mm-hmm. What? No. Maybe uh, Maybe it just streams on Amazon. But yeah. It's out down here for Amazon Films Inceptions there. Uh, yeah. John Wick. The first John Wick. I think these are Amazon funded though. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they just I don't think at the time they were later. bought yeah. the rights. They bought the right. Yeah. Uh-huh. They yeah. kind of came in around Green Book uh, time. Zero Dark Thirty was another one that was probably funded by Amazon. I don't think they actually... I think there's probably full just, ownership yeah. of it, um, but like uh, di- distributed. So, um, Am- Matches Bussy was distributed by Amazon, so that was like it's um, at the time people were like really against the whole idea of a streaming platform being seen as a legitimate uh, film. So they were really against it being uh, even screened at festivals because. But then of where it came from, well. exactly. Yeah, yeah. But then, like now, the Irishman gets no- uh, nominations. Can't, oh yeah, I think you know. It, it, um, well, no problem you know what did it win officially from the Oscars again The Irishman yeah. I, I, I'm not sure it won anything did it I'm sure um, it won something or wait, I might, uh, do you know what I'm thinking of I'm thinking of my my Instagram polls that's what I'm winning you know when I put up polls and I compare films that beat um, that, that's the real prize I was really annoyed when that beat Uncle James I thought Uncle James was a much better film yeah Scorsese I, I hear he was really upset by that Adam Sandler um, that is prime Adam Sandler in that film like he's so good in it yeah. but I think that's um so yeah, there's but Uncle James. I, that's another one. And Adam Sandler got a, a six movie deal with Netflix. Yeah. So that really revived, not revived, but like it enabled his career. So they're Adam Sandler enabled. Like I got, um, I got uh, Apple TV over lockdown, and I started watching a few TV mm. series. There's one film on it called The Banker with Sam Jackson and Anthony Mackie. That was very very good, uh, very well shot too. Really well, like it's very, um, very kind of clean and uh, the. The TV series then defending Jacob with Chris Evans, and I keep forgetting the kid actor's name. He's in it. Um, can't remember his name. Jaden Weas, Jaden Weasley or something. Not Weasley. I'm, I'm sure. not sure. It's not Ron Weasley's brother. But um, yeah, no, it's very, very, um, 
interesting is a lot of stuff. The, the actually the morning show as well is something I didn't think I'd enjoy with Jennifer Aniston and Wee Witherspoon, and um, it was actually really, um, really uh, a really good TV series. But yeah, they're very they're becoming, especially in the last few months, really the kind of place I think where I'm going to those places rather than going to the cinema. Uh, even just to watch old films, absolutely. Um, and there's more interesting stuff on them. Uh, I think Netflix becomes dry at times. Like a lot of times, I find myself scrolling through it, and it's very hard to find something. Even the recently added or the Netflix originals. Uh, like I had to push myself to finish Thirteen Reasons Why the other day. I told you this all the time that it's so. I just found it so hard to finish. Mm. Now I know it's been out for ages, but I just find myself. Netflix is the one place I struggle, but everywhere else, like HBO, Apple TV, Amazon, even they're all very. Um, yeah, hopefully, a lot there. hopefully they all stay strong because, like, mm -hmm. the, the, I think it has to. The, the big fear, I, I mean, like across the board, as if, as in, there's a competition out there, and that there's a, um, diversity, like in terms of who's making things. It's not just one big Netflix. It's not just one big conglomerate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because if if that happens, then we'll get a lot less interesting films. I think yeah. Disney, I think Disney Plus needs to um, start doing a lot. I think. I don't know. It's just I. I feel like they're certainly like I said, doing you, TV shows, like a lot of TV shows. I don't know if they've really. Yeah, there's, there's, they've, they've put a lot of effort into Star Wars, Marvel, and um, Pixar films. Mm -hmm. uh, then they've a lot of like, kind of old films that would have been around like when we were yeah. nine or ten. But besides the TV series, I haven't really looked into them much. But they don't seem great. They seem quite childish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I could be wrong. I think the other day they added um, something that a lot of people are very. Um, there was like a. Um, theatrical release of or sorry a, a release of um, a theatre or there was a play put on it the other day that got a lot of good reviews but still I, I think Disney Plus is the proper kind of release that they've done originally since they've opened uh, since they first released Disney Plus as a platform oh, fair. so I don't know I, I think Disney Plus is um, for me Apple TV HBO and Amazon are the best ones out there I think I mean I think I struggle with Netflix, Netflix is also inter uh, if we go back to the, the like actual movies being produced by um, platforms or like like it's Netflix Studios or it's Amazon Studios like they're like now a studio making films and Netflix mm. had, had does have a lot a lot of um, really high caliber films um, for instance the, if we one of my favorite directors of all time would be the Coen brothers so so Joel and Ethan Coen Mm -hmm. um, in total, together, they've been nominated for over 13 Oscars, and I'm sure they've won quite a few of them. But one thing true that they've been known of... Yeah, true. they made True Grit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men was a fantastic film. Great film, yeah. Um, so they made 18 films in total, but um, one thing they've been known for throughout their career is that they've loved film, as in the actual 35mm film. Yeah. Real, you okay. know, film, shooting on, on film... Uh, they love the quality. They're very kind of a classic filmmaker. Uh, filmmakers, like every single film is different, but it's very much like a th almost a throwback. Um, and film is, was one of their big ingredients to their to their films. Mm -hmm. But uh, recently, their last film um, in 2018, they shifted and they, they embraced the whole digital age mm -hmm. um, by moving in and they got a film with Netflix. So it was uh, produced by Netflix, and it was called Ballad of Buster Scruggs. So it was released in cinemas uh, for a, a few limited release, but the big release was on, on Netflix, mm. and then it was nominated for three Oscars. So like the Irishman. The Irishman came out for like a Exactly, movie. yeah. yeah. It's cinema. And, and they shot it on, on digital for the first time. So they won the last, like nowadays, almost everything is shot on digital, but um, mm. they were one of the last holdouts. Um, like every director has shot at least one film on digital, but they, this was their first film in 2018. So they were late, well, late, uh, late comers to the. So that was game. their first transition. That was their first transition, yeah. and then they went from editing um, everything on the kind of the older editing systems, and they, they moved on to Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, so that was they added about a bus of scrugs on that. Mm. So that was another transition that they made into a kind of a more newer, more modern. Um, and the film technology. was. It, have you seen? You've seen the film. I've seen the film. I was like it. it. Uh, but is it a particular taste? It is I very particular it, case. So Have opinion. you seen it? I, ha I haven't seen it actually. No. The thing is that it's actually a. Is it the kind of film because if they're releasing it in cinema and then Netflix, is it the kind of thing that you'd enjoy? If, like with The Irishman, a lot of people were, like I know people that didn't see it in the cinema, but then watched it on their on phone their, a week yeah. later. They just watched it on their phone. Yeah. They watched The Irishman on the phone. On their phone. Oh wow! Like in a college lecture or something. That wow. sounds sacrilegious. That's, imagine. 
Like yeah. I, I just did not have the proper setup, even on like a big TV. Justice. No, I, that sounds pretty bad saying, oh, why don't you watch it on your big TV at home? I don't like, not everybody has a big TV I, at home. Do you yeah. know what I mean? um, but yeah, the idea that you watch uh, something like that, like what yeah, you said. Yeah, Buster Scruggs is, a, is yeah. a kind of a big picture film. Like you really need to sit down and, and devote some time to it because it's also kind of not your quite typical film. It's actually a, a series of vignettes. So that's short films, basically. There's like five or six short films. Mm. They're about like 15, 20 minutes each. So each one is a different story. They're like loosely related with the themes and stuff. Okay. Mostly set in the in the West and uh, American, you know, like the Wild West. Mm. But each one's different. Uh, it has some good good ones. Uh, Liam Neeson's in it uh, in one of the stories. Oh, so it's like yeah. So it has loads of different episodes that are sort of similar but different stories. Yes. And loads of different actors come in. So it's like a Black Mirror kind of thing. A Black Mirror blast set into one film. So it's like oh, okay. you know, chapter be, one, chapter two. Cool, but yeah, it's kind of like a TV mm, show, but yeah. it's it's not. It's a movie. I remember, yeah, I remember when Bandersnatch came out. I remember when that came out. And you could choose oh, yeah, yeah, the outcome. Yeah. And I remember doing that, thinking, oh, geez, this is class. And I went, I think, and you could do that I, for every episode. It, it just, yeah. So I went into like Bandersnatch played it. I was like, oh, that's unreal. And I went on to another episode. And I was like waiting for 10, 15 minutes, waiting for the option to come up saying what line he wants to say. Bandersnatch was actually edited by an Irish guy. All right, really. Which is actually really, really cool. And he, he just got nominated for an IFTA for best editing for, for Banner Snatch. Wow. Wait, just now? As in like the IFTAs just got released a few days ago. Oh, yeah, but I have them here. Is it best editing? Best editing, yeah. Um, For? For Banner Snatch. Well, really? Did you think having like the whole multiple choice ending kind of like compromised like the story or the structure of the film? Or? I mean, it was, it was an experiment. Oh, Tony Kearns. Yeah. yeah. Black Mirror Banner Snatch. There it is, yeah. W- what's his name? Tony Kearns. Tony Kearns. Jeez, I, don't know, cause I, um, I remember watching that and thinking there's one actor that I recognized uh, he was the guy from he's he quite a young fella he was in Detroit he was in um, The Revenant too, and he played the really stupid the kind of dopey kid in um, We're the Millers yes exactly I, his, like, he's his one career of my, he's he, he was in that film and then he was he's all brilliant. over the place it was yeah. crazy like I, I, he was really plays a lot of different type of characters in it too which is cool I don't know his real name but his, his real, real name. name, his actual name, mm. <laughs> real name. We, we name. just call him Joe. But um, yeah, he was. Uh, that's that was good. It's good to see an Irish person nominated for that too. Jeez, that's crazy. Mm. Um, and and for such like a very like experimental editing based. Yeah, film, you know like, that must have taken a while. That's mm. a lot of coding. Gay, like well, not coding, but yeah, I'm sure you they, were, they had other did, guys. They had other. Were they other guys, that, but guys doing that? He was part of the process for yeah, that. Yeah, the storytelling. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, that's a big part. Yeah, that came out. That was huge. But yeah, that sounds cool. What you're saying that it's kind of like a Black Mirror. Uh, is it still on Netflix? I'm sure. Like it's Netflix original. I'm sure it's gonna be on there yeah, forever. Yeah. Netflix, I feel like they'd too. be rebooting a lot of stuff that they used to have on it to <laughs> to choke more out because people are sat at home watching Netflix these yeah. days. Mm. So they're probably just trying to add more. Because I'd say the Tiger King days are gone. I never watched Tiger King. You know, remember yeah. everybody was like, "There's this Car- Carol Baskin thing going around." Hmm. I don't know. I don't, but what do you mean, like Tiger Tiger King days are gone? As in, well, like it, when lockdown first came in, yeah. Tiger uh, King yeah. was the show to watch on Netflix. Yeah, like, yeah. I think the fact that everybody was watching it made me not want to watch it. I yeah, just like, find I get I hate mob mentality. Like if somebody, if loads of people are watching something, like normal people, I can't watch it. Mm. Like if that's it's something I know that I would hate because everybody else loves it. It's so strange. <laughs> Dave, you're special. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm the only guy like that. But yeah, it's I didn't know about that. That the Bandersnatch thing. That's pretty cool. Um yeah, so that's digital age. Do you think there's any underrated? Have you guys seen much of HBO, much of Amazon, much of Apple TV? I uh, recommend that. No, Apple TV. actually, no. Yeah, I mean, we have we have Amazon. They have some some good stuff. Oh, there. you do. Um, do you know what I'm leeching off these days? Yeah. Is that file that you guys sent me over lockdown? I know oh, it's okay. the same films over and over again, but it's free films lockdown. Oh so, yeah. Don't talk about that. The feds will catch us. The feds, yeah, they're watching us right now with their donuts. Um, but yeah, there's I. Would recommend Apple TV. Okay, yeah. Um, you don't do much of anything outside Netflix. Uh, Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Just Disney. Plus the what do you think it's decent? Do you think it's good? I, I think, think it is. Are... I mean, obviously, it, it's it's great that you it's have very access to all of these loads like, of stuff on exactly. It, yeah, all these like like films you would watch in your childhood and things yeah. like that, and you know, even like not gonna lie, we watch more Fox recent Nine, stuff like, right? as well. We yeah. Watch the what now? The Fox and the Hand. Oh, that's actually expect a live action film. in the next year or two. I hope not. Oh god, expect it; it'll come. I mean, I'm sure it will. Definitely, yeah. that's kind of annoying. Yeah. They'd be like, "We should make this." They have a, definitely have a, like you know that scene from the Simpsons movie, mm. and he's picking out the plans. I'd say the head of the CEO of Disney is just picking out what re- live action yeah. to make, and they just pick it out of random. Yeah, I'd say that would be one of the five options. It's that, a that was hit. that was one of my favorite Disney films. Yeah, I loved this. It was just so dark, like compared to all the other films. It was one of the films yeah. I had on VHS. Yeah, yeah plug it into the TV. Um, um, but another streaming platform that you may not have heard of, actually, there's a few now that I think of it. Um, but one that you should check out 
which is quite cheap, uh, quite, uh, you know, compared to all these other Disney Plus and stuff like that, is one called Mubi. If you're a student and you're at home listening to this right now, go to Mubi. You can actually get a free trial. I'm not paid by Mubi, but you can get uh, Shout a, out to you, a, a free subscription uh, for all uh, third level students. Mubi. For Mubi. I feel like so, I've heard of that. M U B I. Um, and so what they do, oh, the their shtick is that they only have 30 films. So one film for every day, and every day one film comes off, and every day a new film comes on. So that means okay. you don't have a you know a big plethora of choice. You don't have this big confusing maze of different categories and different subjects. Yeah, yeah. You only have 30 films, and they're all really like they're handpicked. So it's, this one guy is like choosing like a good film. So you know it's going to be at least you may not like it, but it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be uh, like um, they do a lot of art house films. They do a lot of foreign films, a lot of old films. And you're guaranteed to not know a, a ton of them. Yeah. So you should check them out because um, they have some really, really quality films out there and something new. It's not just the Disney stuff. What would your, uh, your go-to be for Disney for nostalgia point of view, do you think? Uh, like what's something that you watch kind of that would be like? Let's think now. Do you watch animated I, I, or would you been? Animated, absolutely, mostly, yeah. Because yeah. um, I think people sometimes watch like High School Musical as oh, nostalgia. No, no, like, no, 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 no. An, an, anim, animated, yeah. I mean, I watched just about every animated Disney film when I was when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, Peter Pan, especially, was was a bit of a favorite of mine. Uh, Wait, the animated one. The animated one, yeah. Because there was a live action one. I know there was, yeah, but I, I, I don't really like that one. <laughs> that would have been a favorite of mine. Jason too. Isaac was in that film, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, that's two topics. Unfortunately, we're off past half an hour. Okay. Uh, these times fly they yeah. always do yeah absolutely but, uh, thanks for having us on David. we could sit here for hours but um, yeah thanks to Connor for coming on uh, thanks to Keen again that's Keen's last episode for this book which is a bit sad to hear but yeah. thanks again Connor for coming on no worries yeah. uh, uh, thank you